Hi, my name is Ryan. This short video will discuss how to write a literature review for your dissertation or project. This video will provide you with resources, a plan and key concepts to help you write your literature review. What is a literature review? A literature review seeks to understand and document the current research before carrying out a new investigation. This is very important. Before you produce new knowledge, you must explore the current knowledge. You do not want to walk into an area blind. You need to know the most prominent theories and models. The current knowledge will empower your current research. This is a metaphor to help you think about writing a literature review. You are about to go on a research journey to find new knowledge. But before you go, you need to pack your suitcase with current knowledge. This suitcase is your literature review. You are Mickey Mouse, placing the current and relevant knowledge into your suitcase. Not any knowledge, just the relevant knowledge from your area of inquiry. When we go on a journey, we only take what we need. A good suitcase should only contain relevant items. A bad suitcase contains everything. Your supervisor does not want you to review all of the literature, just the literature that is relevant to your area of inquiry. The two most important paragraphs in your literature review are the introduction and conclusion paragraphs. The introduction paragraph is important because it states the purpose of your literature review. Your literature review must have a specific purpose. For what reason are you packing your suitcase? The conclusion section is important because you state the clarity that you have gained from reviewing the literature. After reviewing the literature, you are in a better place. You have more knowledge now. You can see clearly now. You understand what was written. You understand what needs to be written. Explain this in your conclusion. Explain the clarity that you now have. So, what are the common purposes for writing a literature review? You may want to find a suitable theory or theoretical framework or model to use for your research. For example, you are looking at the rise of social media engagement during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a new situation, but perhaps there's been an older or recent theory that helps explain social media engagement. Using this theory will give you a deeper understanding of social media engagement during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. Using this theory will help you organize your thoughts. Remember, you are going on a research journey to find new knowledge, but finding new knowledge is difficult. The real world is chaotic. The real world is anarchic. The real world is messy. Using a theory or model or framework helps you make sense of the world. It simplifies the world for you. This map represents real life. This is a more realistic London underground map. Can you see how messy it is? Can you see how chaotic it is? Can you see how anarchic it is? It is difficult for us to make sense of this map. We find it easier to follow this map. This is theory. This is a model. This is a framework. It simplifies life for us. It resembles real life, but it is simplified. We can start our research journey with this map. When you search for suitable theories or suitable models or suitable theoretical frameworks, this is a critical activity because you have to weigh up all of the pros and cons. You have to weigh up the advantages and disadvantages. Also, you may find that one theory or concept has multiple definitions. Different authors have defined the concept or theory in different ways. It is your job to sift through all of these definitions to find a suitable definition that will be used in your study. Or if you don't find a suitable framework or suitable model, you can create a model yourself by putting together two approaches. So you will take an aspect from one model in a study that you like and combine it with another model from another study that you like. Or you take a portion of theory and combine it with another theory. All of this is great. Just make sure you justify what you are doing. Justify why you needed to combine these two theories. Justify why you needed to combine these two concepts or justify why you needed to combine these two models. In your conclusion, you should state which framework you selected or you should state which framework you constructed. Another purpose for your literature review is to find a suitable methodology to use for your research. You may want to review the literature in your topic area to find a suitable methodology that you can use for your research. For example, 
Your topic is looking at the experiences of female mentors. So you want to see how other researchers in this area have researched this topic. Which methodologies did they use? Are these suitable methodologies for your study? You can review the methods used in these studies. You can review the research philosophies used in these studies. You can review the type of data analysis used in these studies. Or if you don't find a suitable methodology, you can create a methodology yourself by piecing together different methodologies. So you would construct a methodology from all of the literature you have reviewed. Once again, you need to justify what you are doing, justify why you needed to piece together methodologies. In your conclusion, you will go on to state which methodology you selected or which methodology you constructed. The next common purpose is to situate your research. You want to find a place to situate your research in a particular subject area. You want to find where your research will be best appreciated. You may do this by identifying a gap, then fitting your research into this gap, or you may have identified an exciting trend in the literature. So you want your research to be part of this trend. Perhaps you have seen a trend of studies that apply a critical focus to internet technologies. You believe your work is critical too. So you want to show how your research will complement this area. You believe that your research will add to this area. This is a good approach because you should see your research as being informed by current research. Your research should also react to and speak back to this research. Here is an example of a literature review. You will start with an introduction. In this introduction, you will state the purpose of the literature review. Here is an example of a purpose. This chapter or this section will review the literature to find a suitable theoretical framework to analyze the influence of government policies on the consumer spending. This is a clear and direct purpose. After this purpose, you should explain how your literature review is arranged. This section commences with a discussion on the development of key frameworks. The second section will do this. The third section will do this. Explain how your literature review is arranged to give an overview of your literature review. So your introduction should contain the purpose and also the overview of the entire section. After this introduction paragraph, you start the main body. In the main body, you should discuss how these various theories or models or frameworks were developed. It's always good to provide some background information. Then you will begin the critical work. You'll weigh up the strengths and weaknesses of various frameworks or various models or various theories. The strengths of these frameworks are matters that will enhance your research. The weaknesses will be matters that do not help you achieve your research aims and research objectives. And finally, you will identify a suitable framework, provide reasons why the framework you have selected will help you achieve the aims and objectives of your study. You will end your literature review with a conclusion, state the clarity you have achieved. You have been through this journey of reviewing the literature. What conclusions have you reached? Here is an example. In conclusion, this review identified that four loans rendering of the theory of planned behavior is the most appropriate framework to analyze such and such. This is an example of a literature review, an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. And also in the conclusion, you can add a few words that take the reader to the next chapter. If you need help looking for strengths and weaknesses of frameworks, theories, or models, you can refer to my two YouTube videos where I ask these four critical questions. Is it too general? Is it too outdated? Does it mention its limitations? Does it mention race, gender or class? You can see these four questions addressed in these two YouTube videos. Also, here are excellent resources of how to critique methodologies. If you want to critique a quantitative methodology or a qualitative methodology, these are great resources. You can download these resources in the description box below this video. I will end this video with some concepts to help you better understand the writing process. This man is sorting through some outfits to choose the most appealing. This is a critical process. Likewise, you pick and you review the most relevant studies. 
you review the studies that will help you achieve your aims and objectives. This lady has narrowed down her choice to just two outfits. Likewise, after reviewing the literature, you may have narrowed down the literature to just two approaches. These two approaches will be the most beneficial for your study. This is a good thing. Finally, this lady has picked an outfit and she is trying on the outfit. Likewise, when you pick an approach, you should take the time to explain how it will be beneficial to your specific study. This is the most important part. You get marks for explaining the wider literature, but you need to relate the wider literature to your specific study. How has the literature review benefited your specific study? You need to bring it home. You need to relate the literature to your research. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.